Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I do that, I have to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for the unbelievable growth of my channel, and thank you for the wonderful comments that you make. I really do appreciate it. I have a handful of items for today. The first one is uh, the Tucker Carlson encounter with Tulsi Gabbard. I usually try to stay away from political stuff on my channel, but um, I found this, it's an hour long interview and I'm not going to play it for you. I'm just going to put the link in the description so you can watch it for yourself if you're interested. But I found this uh, interview interesting because she describes what happened to her in Washington when she didn't toe the party line and how she was treated by both Republican and Democrat politicians in Washington. It's really an eye-opener, and I suggest that if you're interested in figuring out what's really going on in Washington, that you would, might be interested in watching this interview with Tulsi. Uh, if you're not familiar with her, she was a Democrat representative from Hawaii, and she was being touted as an up-and-coming star in the party, and then she left the party and became an independent because of some of the things that she saw going on that she disagreed with. And that's when official Washington, both Republican and Democrat, turned their backs on her and told her that her career was over. She would never be in politics again. And I just think it's interesting to, to learn about the inside scoop on what took place. It is something you might be interested in seeing. The second item that I have is an article titled The Russian Canary in the Coal Mine. And basically what it is, is it's a, an article about how uh, what took place in Russia recently with the terrorist attack is coming to America because we've been allowing people to cross our border unvetted and they, there's an estimate of almost 300 known terrorists that have entered the United States over the past year and a half, and no one knows where they are. They've only located about 15. And so I've highlighted a couple of passages in this article that I thought uh, I wanted you to know about. The article begins with this. Um, <clears throat> well, that's not the very first thing. Well, let me read you the first sentence. I have grave concerns, fear even, arising out of three separate but related events, thousands of miles apart. The event most geographically distant from the U.S. occurred in Moscow. I'm referring, of course, to the ISIS attack on concert goers that resulted in over 135 innocents being killed and scores more wounded, many critically. The second event is ongoing, thousands of miles away from the Moscow massacre. It is the wide open U.S. southern border that has existed as a matter of Biden administrative policy since January 2021. The millions of unverified and in many cases unknown people from over 160 countries who have flooded across our border is literally an invasion. For those who don't like it being called an invasion, you're free to call it a migration, an immigration, or a pink rock candy mountain. Call it what you will. It, it will not change the fact that it is a massive invasion of our country by people who have no legal right to be here. The third event provides one of the threads that ties the other two together. It is the recent vote by every Democratic senator against an amendment to the $1.2 trillion government bill that would have barred the use of taxpayer funds to fly illegal invaders into towns and cities in the interior of the country for resettlement. This obviously is part and parcel of the Democrat strategy of not doing anything that could smack of the slightest opposition to the illegal invasion. And he talks about what the impact of that will be and, and basically, um, without being too uh, alarmist about it, 
what we're doing is we're allowing people who hate us and who want to kill us to come into the country unvetted, unidentified, and we're moving them around into cities and small towns all over the United States. So the potential at least exists for a mass casualty event triggered by these terrorists that are now on our soil all over the country, small towns, big towns, everywhere. Now, if I were a terrorist, I would target something big like a football game or a baseball game where lots and lots of people are. And I would try to kill as many of those people as I possibly could. But if you think about it, if you spread these guys out all over the country and they're all attacking simultaneously and everywhere, imagine the panic that that would create in the populace. And then what happens next? They send in the police, they take over, and they, uh, what are they, how they, I can't remember how they phrase it, but they, they would implement martial law and our rights would be gone and all in the name of protection and safety. So, something to think about. The next article is, as the West draws closer to Vietnam, Hanoi gets more like Beijing. And that is the truth. Hanoi is starting to really clamp down on free speech. They're installing cameras everywhere like, like uh, uh, China has. And I don't know if you're familiar with what's going on in China, but they now have what they call a social credit system, which if you don't have much social credit, you can't even get a job. And this is all controlled by the government. So I have no question in my mind that that's what the elites would love to implement worldwide if they could. The next article I have is it's all much worse than I thought. And this is an article about the uh, censorship that's been taking place in America and how it, how it is coordinated between the government and private entities. And uh, I thought you would be interested in reading, reading this article. It's by Michael Schellenberger. He is one of the individuals that exposed the Twitter files. And so... Uh, definitely worth looking at. And then the last item I have is, uh, you might think it a little strange, but uh, I wanted to point out one thing in this article. Pakistani family blamed the far right for torching their house. A few candle lit vigils later, the truth has come out. So what happened was, this is in Germany, a Pakistani family, oh, what happened there? I thought I Okay, I'm not getting the right article. A Pakistani family, um, basically, that we know now, they set fire to their house. Their house burned down, and there were signs on the house that were um, xenophobic and Islamophobic, according to the authorities. And so there was this big hullabaloo, and they were going to investigate and all this stuff. And it turns out that it was the family themselves that set fire to the house for the insurance. And it was the family themselves that put the, um, the slogans on the walls before they set fire to the house. And they actually sold all their furniture first to make sure it didn't get burned up in the fire. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, the one thing that I wanted to point out from this article is this paragraph, which I'm going to read to you now. Chebley suggested that arson was reflective, the arson was reflective of an anti-Muslim undercurrent in Germany, intimating right-wing politicians were responsible and that, quote, what is happening at the moment is putting democracy at great risk, unquote. The reason why I highlighted that is because that sounds so much like what the Democrats are saying here in America. Democracy is at risk. That's why we have to censor you, because we have to save democracy. Whenever you hear that term, if you're like me, you start thinking, well, wait a minute. 
what's going on behind the scenes that they're not telling us about. Because there's a lot of stuff going on in the world today that is not freedom oriented. And it's definitely uh, has an authoritarian streak to it. And they use phrases and they use terminology that strikes at your emotions to get you riled up so that you will agree with what they're saying. And you'll think, for example, uh, people on the right in the United States are demanding that uh, the politicians shut down the Palestinian protesters who are blocking streets and protesting the, the war in Israel. Well, in America, you have the right to do that. And the people on the right have no right to ask the government to put a stop to it. As long as they're peaceably assembling, they have just as much right to do that as you do to protest for anything that, that is a concern to you. So once again, we see that they can use issues, you know, whatever kind of issue it is, a war or whatever, to divide us and get us going against each other and demanding that the government intervene. And every time the government intervenes, it chips away at our freedoms and we lose more and more of our freedoms. And we don't need to be doing that. So people need to stop and think about what they're asking for because they might actually get it. And it might not be what they thought it would be. So that's the news for today. I thank you for coming to my channel and I pray for you every day that you will live an abundant life, that you'll be healthy and that you'll live a long time and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I also pray that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your request known to God, and the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.